Running a server cluster in your home lab is an awesome way to not only learn about enterprise applications and running things such as virtual machines and containers in a way that is highly available, it's, well, just cool. In the video today, I'm going to show you guys what I've been playing around with this past week or so in the home lab. I've been doing a lot with Proxmox as well as experimenting with shared storage, aka Ceph. So if you have been wanting to create your own Proxmox shared cluster with Ceph shared storage for high availability, then please do stick around for this video. You guys know I run a VMware vSphere environment in the home lab and primarily due to that is what I work with a lot in the enterprise. However, I love experimenting with other hypervisors and quite frankly there are many open source hypervisors such as Proxmox that really make a hard case for going open source even in the enterprise. However, I will leave that topic there for now. When you are thinking about HA or high availability, you not only have to think about the compute and memory of your workloads, which servers are actually running those VMs or containers, you also have to think about storage. Shared storage is a requirement for most hypervisors that I know that have true high availability. And the reason for that is if you have a node fail and have storage that is only attached to that failed node, the remaining nodes cannot access the data that was stored only on the failed node. So with shared storage, you have all of your nodes able to access that same storage. When you have a failure, the other nodes are able to pick up where the failed node left off. I'm going to step you guys through how to create a cluster using Proxmox 8. Then after the cluster is created, we're going to create Ceph shared storage between those Proxmox nodes. So step one, let's create our Proxmox 8 cluster. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is configure a Proxmox cluster. Now, what I have done to pre-stage this exercise is I have three Proxmox servers stood up and configured with IP addresses, just the basic normal configuration. So I can log into each of those Proxmox servers. So I've got PMOX01, PMOX02, and PMOX03. I'm going to go back to Proxmox01 and click the data center node. I'm going to click the cluster node. And as you note, under the cluster information screen, we have the ability to create cluster and join cluster. Since I do not currently have a Proxmox cluster, I'm going to choose create cluster. I'm going to call this Proxmox cluster PMOX cluster 01. And I'm going to use the existing IP address information in the dropdown, which is the IP address of the Proxmox node. I'm going to click create. And this will kick off the process to create a Proxmox cluster. And as you know, we've got the task OK at the bottom. So I'm going to close out of this screen. Now, as you know, we've got cluster nodes. We currently have PMOX01 as expected. And as you know, also, there is no longer the option to create cluster. We can now click the Join Information button. And that's what we want. So we're going to click the join information button. So this essentially gives us an encrypted string that we use on our other Proxmox nodes to join the existing cluster. So I'm going to just simply copy this encrypted string. I'm going to go over to Proxmox 02. I'm going to click the data center node once again, go to cluster, I'm going to click the join cluster, and then I'm going to pass in that encrypted string. And then also it asks for the peers root password. So I'm going to type that in. And as we can see, we've got the fingerprint, we've got the peers link address, and now we simply click the join and it has the cluster name. So join PMOX cluster 01. This task has started. So as you can see, it's going to stop services and join the node to the new Proxmox cluster. Now, one thing to note is you need join information for each unique node that is going to be in your Proxmox cluster. 
So I'm going to refresh the screen back to my cluster configuration. I'm going to click join information again, and this produces a new unique join encrypted stream. So now on PMOX 03, I'm going to repeat my steps, go to data center, cluster, and I'm going to click the join cluster option. I'm going to paste in the encrypted stream, and then I'm going to type in the root password, and then finally click the join PMOX cluster 01 button. If I go back to PMOX 02, that configuration has already applied. I'm gonna refresh the browser session as you need to do after joining to the cluster. And now, as we can see, any of the nodes that we log into, we should see all of our nodes. And we've got the login box, log back in, and we should see all three Proxmox nodes, which we do. If we go back to 01, we correctly see all of our nodes, and we can do that from any of the Proxmox nodes. So now we have our new Proxmox cluster configured. Ceph, like many object storage-based storage solutions like VMware vSAN and others, take advantage of locally attached storage on the server itself. Now you may wonder, how can locally attached storage be shared with other Proxmox nodes? Well, the key is a distributed file system. Each server in a Proxmox cluster running Ceph contributes local storage to a logical storage volume, and replicas of your data are created within that Ceph storage pool. When there is a failure, you still have access to those other replicas of your data. Okay, now that we have our Proxmox cluster created successfully, we want to install the Ceph component on each of our Proxmox nodes. And that is easily accomplished by navigating on each Proxmox node that you're logged into, navigating to the data center option and simply clicking the menu option for Ceph. It will prompt you to install Ceph as it does here. Notice it says Ceph is not installed in this node. Would you like to install it now? So I'm going to click install now. One of the things that you want to note on this screen, if you don't have a subscription, you want to change your repository to the no subscription model. Obviously in production environments, you want to have that repository set to enterprise. Uh, however, I'm just setting mine to no subscription. So I'm going to click the start installation button, uh, verify that you want to install the Ceph component. So you simply type the Y at the prompt. Now, as you note, it gives the message at the very end, install Ceph Quincy successfully. So I'm going to click the next button. Here I'm simply just selecting the IP subnet that is available under the public network IP CIDR range and doing the same for the cluster network. Now in a production cluster, you're going to want to have dedicated networks or you could choose to have dedicated networks for your cluster network and your public network so you can have that proper segmentation and and multiple uplinks and so on and so forth. So that's certainly best practice. If you click the advanced checkbox, you can see that the number of replicas and minimum replicas you can set here, the very minimum is three and two. So you have to have three replicas and a minimum of two. So I'm gonna click next. And finally, we get to the installation successful. Now, as I already noted before, this gives just a basic checklist of what we need to do. So we need to install it on all other nodes, create additional Ceph monitors, OSDs, and create Ceph pools. So we're going to step through all of those steps. Uh, let's click finish, and I'm going to quickly run through that process on nodes two and three. One of the first things that we need to create is a Ceph OSD or object storage daemon. Now this is responsible for storing objects on a local file system and providing access to them over the network. So it's a critical component of your Ceph configuration that we need to initialize in Proxmox. 
So now we want to configure our OSD, and this is where we actually designate the disk that we want to use for our Ceph storage. And I only have one available. This is actually a nested virtual machine that I'm running the Proxbox cluster in. So I've just simply added an additional disk, a 50 gig or so uh, sized disk. So as you know, that's the one that is available for my Ceph storage. So I'm going to make sure that disk is selected. Every other option, I'm just going to leave as the defaults and we're gonna click create. And this process runs, it's going to designate the disk as part of uh, the Ceph storage. And I'm going to now flip over to my PMOX02 node. I'm going to scroll down to Ceph and we're going to click OSD. And then we're going to create OSD. And again, we're selecting our disk here. We're just accepting the defaults. Click create. The OSD has created and click the reload button. And now we have 01, 02. So finally, let's navigate to 03 going to click the O3 node, go to Ceph, OSD, create OSD, and we're going to click create. And this process runs. Uh, we're going to be able to reload. And now we see all the nodes are correctly up. Now, if I click back on data center, when we go back to the Ceph node, before it had a warning because we didn't have our OSDs uh, properly configured. So now we've got the health status of OK. Now let's create our Ceph pool. So I'm going to go down to Pools, Create, and we're going to call this PMOX Pool 01. And for the size values, again, you want to have three and a min size of two. We're leaving everything else as the defaults, the crush rule, auto scale mode is on, everything else looks good. So we're going to click create. After the pool creates, we will notice that all of the nodes should properly have this pool available, which they do. So that's awesome. Now we see PMOX pool 01 on PMOX 01, the same pool on 02. And then finally, same pool on O3. Another critical component of your Ceph configuration is the Ceph monitor. The Ceph monitor is a special construct of your Ceph configuration that maps the cluster state, including the monitor map, manager map, the OSD map, and the MDS map, and the Ceph crush map. Now, you will see crush listed in the Ceph configuration. And not to overcomplicate this, but crush is the construct that allows Ceph clients to communicate with OSDs directly rather than through a centralized server or broker. We want to create the additional monitor. So as you notice, I already have the first node running as a monitor. I'm going to create. I'm going to select my second node. We're going to create. As we note, it popped in there, so we're going to create a final time. We're going to add the third node and allow this to finish, to have all three Proxmox hosts functioning as monitor nodes. Okay, so all three are displaying under the monitor section. All right, guys, now for the exciting part that I have been waiting for. How well does our Ceph storage pool hold up when we want to do a real-time operation, such as migrating a virtual machine from one Proxmox host to another? So I've prepared for this demo by creating a Windows Server 2022 virtual machine that is just a basic installation. I've got an IP address and I've got everything configured with Vert IO drivers installed. So what we're going to do is start a continuous ping for the gateway of this particular home lab environment. So I've got the continuous ping running. So what I'm going to do is initiate a migration from PMOX01 to PMOX02 and see if it correctly fails over from PMOX01 to O2. And if you notice, I do have this virtual machine on the PMOX pool 01, which is our Ceph storage. So let's kick this off. We're going to select PMOX 02, and we're going to monitor this along with the virtual machine. As we can see, it's starting the tunnel. It's going to only copy the memory map 
of this virtual machine. So if you notice, there's not a huge amount of data being copied and we just briefly lose contact with the console. But as you can see, we've still got continuous pings running and that is super, super cool. So it tells us that our Proxmox Ceph pool that is distributed shared storage between those Proxmox nodes is doing exactly what it needs to do. All of the hosts correctly have access to it. If that were not the case, we would see more than just this four gigs of memory map, which granted is a bit anemic for Windows Server 2022. But for this test VM, that's what I've got allocated. And also what's really cool to me is this is a nested environment inside of VMware vSphere. So, so actually I have extra overhead on this virtual machine compared to just bare metal. And to see it fail over that seamlessly, that is awesome. Well, guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this deep dive into Proxmox clustering, specifically with Proxmox 8 that is newly released, and just how easy it is to install Ceph on our Proxmox 8 nodes in the Proxmox cluster and allocate a shared storage pool between each Proxmox node. Please do like the video, subscribe to the channel. It lets me know you guys enjoy the content. I'm going in the right direction and it also helps to support the channel. Once again, I'm Brandon Lee. Please keep on home labbing guys, take care out there, and I will see you guys on the next video.